Hello, and uh, welcome back to Green, Green Lady Permaculture. Um, today, I am actually going to do a video here inside my grow room. Um, I have jerk cats, hence the chicken wire. Um, so I have some Mioga ginger in there, it's the variegated kind, and just some pothos clippings. Uh, some house plants and a sweet potato I stuck in a salad plastic container. Oh, and what else up here right now? Ah, a Siberian pea shrub. So, we've got that going in here, um, but those are not what I'm focusing on. What I'm focusing on is down here. Um, excuse me while I get settled. Um, I've been at sick, ah, at sick, home sick with, uh, coronavirus, so, um, I'm starting to feel a bit better now, but we literally have freezing fog outside right now, and it's 22 degrees, it's January 27th in my, uh, Central Oregon Zone 6B, de um, high altitude desert garden. So there's literally um, frost growing off of my trees right now, but everybody online is uh, planting seeds. And this time of year, I get this major itch to grow seeds or start seeds, but it's not the time of year because my last frost date isn't until June 15th. Yes, you heard that correctly. I am not actually supposed to plant outside without protection until June 15th. So, I don't do a lot of things that need protection. But, today, I want to start a couple of things inside without heat. Um, so, like, these guys up here, my house plants that I have on a little heat with the sweet potatoes and the, and the tree, which is the Siberian pea shrub, those don't need, I mean, they have a little heat on them just because I'm okay with them getting bigger, um, but these I'm not going to do heat. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to start uh, some cardoon and some artichoke. Now, these are heavily cold tolerant plants normally, though they're not quite perennial in my area. This one might be. So I'm starting this one now. I have never grown uh, cardoon before, but it's basically supposed to be a lot like artichoke. You just eat the leaves instead and you just kind of blanch them. Um, it looks like an interesting, fun plant, but um, yeah, they're, I don't know. We'll find out. I've seen a couple of videos, but nothing major on them. So I'm going to grow those two. And then I'm also going to do some Mizuna and some Swiss chard. So, and no, I am not sponsored by Baker Creek. Um, but I do order from them because they tend to have very good seeds. Last year I was a little disappointed in all honesty, but they were overwhelmed with seed uh, orders and everybody doing the lockdown, you know, coronavirus orders uh, for 2020. So there was a lot of people starting gardens last year. So a lot of seeds got sold that probably didn't have the best germination rate that probably shouldn't have been. But we're going to give them another shot because they've always done great before that. So they sent me this one as one of my free seeds and I purchased these two. So I'm going to go ahead and plant in these uh, containers. I love these because um, they have a little dome. And I just bought these on Amazon and they have these little domes here. And I can, you know, put a couple of these on a heat mat and it's not a problem. I don't have to um, like wrap it with saran wrap or cover it or anything like that. So I have these. I also, today I'm going to start I started picking out what I'm going to plant in my uh, cover um, under my uh, covered bed and um, so I'm gonna plant these let's see uh, some beets uh, it's a beet mix a radish mix 
a um, yes, this is the butterhead lettuce seeds, um, a winter seed mix, and a different Mizuna. Um, so I'm gonna plant these all outside under cover, and then um, this is a food takeout food container. You know, DoorDash, our new best friend, that it was two of them. I tripped holes in it, so this is soaking through right now with some water. But this is just going to go in the greenhouse, and I'm going to do this as kind of a 30-day cold stratification. Yes, I am growing comfrey from seed. Comfrey blocking does not do as well in my area. So I'm going to try some from seed because I want it to spread. Um, but otherwise, I'm just going to deadhead them before they go to seed if I'm, you know, done with it. So I'm not too worried about it here. Again, I'm in a desert. We don't get a ton of moisture. And if you want something to grow, it kind of has to be intentional. So in my area, it's not such a big deal. So I'm going to get going on this. I'm going to pause the video and then come back um, about halfway through. And I'll show you how I take care of this. All right, so I'm back. I just started on the Mizuna. I got a little lid here. Um, these seeds are super tiny. Um, so basically this is all the seeds that were in that free Mizuna packet. Um, so luckily, you know, I wasn't really planning on it. We'll see if the, the non-free one has any more. But um, basically I'm just you know, not doing this very well because I'm looking through my camera to do it. A lot of times I use, like for tiny seeds, I'll use the end of a zip tie to poke the hole. So I'll do, you know, something like this, scuff up the hole and then drop it in there, that kind of thing. But that's only if I'm like indoor gardening and I don't have a ton of seeds, I can really, you know, be that careful. Um, most of the time, like if I'm outside, I don't know if you've seen any of my other videos, but if I'm outside, um, I'm literally just throwing the seeds around, you know, like you get seeds, you get seeds, everybody gets seeds. Um, I don't want to get sued, so I'm not going to say what that's from, but <laughs> so there we go. basically the tiny little seed in there um, I'm probably gonna go back and probably put a couple in each but I just want to make sure there's at least one and I'm only gonna do six so um, I'll do that on the Mizuna and this is that uh, the free uh, purple Mizuna purple to green and then I also have the green to purple one and the early so we do a lot of Japanese cooking or Japanese style cooking. It's definitely not Japanese cooking. Um, it's more of like basically our, you know, Western horrible uh, eating tendencies and taking a very healthy, wonderful eating tendency uh, and, you know, trying to make them work together. But so I'll do these like this and then um, pull this off and then I'll use just a little mist sprayer and that makes sure that the um, seeds aren't going to go moving around. If I had like used like a pump sprayer or poured water on, those tiny seeds would end up who knows where. So um, that's why I like to use this sprayer for indoor seeds. Again, if it's outdoor, I'm just throwing it around. I don't care. But indoor, I need to know where the plant is, so where I should be looking for it. So hold on. There we go. See that the dirt is just ever so slightly damp, but it's damp all the way through because I made sure this was good soil. So I'm just going to It was well uh, moistened before. Anybody else hate that word besides me? So now, Swiss chard seeds are neat. Um, so I can get it into my hand. I really need a tripod in here, but I'm seriously waiting for a um, 
memory card for my new camera. So this is the last time I'll be doing it with, um, with my phone. So kind of don't want to bother setting it up. So these are the Swiss chard seeds. Um, I love Swiss chard because it's like basically growing a flower. Uh, they are just like beet seeds. So every one of these little pods, see if I can get it to focus. Ah, I don't know where it went. Uh, every one of these little pods has a bunch of seeds in it. Um, I think you can get like three or four seeds. It's the same with beets because technically, um, chard and beets are basically the same thing. Chard and, uh, was developed for the top of the plant to be eaten, um, and crossed with more like lettuce type plants and beets it was it went the other way it was going for the root so um basically i'm just gonna not throw these around yeah oh there it is ha. um so i'm just gonna stick that in there i'm gonna do the same nothing major just you know some people get really into it and be like, oh, I want one in every corner or whatever. Um, anyway, I'm just gonna, it goes a lot slower when I'm filming it. So, okay. So I'll just, you know, push those in just a bit. So we're going to do the same thing with the artichoke and uh, the cardoon, but I will stop and show you the seeds for the artichoke and the cardoon. So hold on. All right, so I've gotten them all kind of set up here. Um, let's see. I was right on that the artichokes and the cardoon are very related. Um, they're probably the same thing as kind of the beets and... Uh, the chard is the the artichoke must have been uh bred for the flowers the cardoon was bred for the leaves to be edible they are very let's see if i can get this to focus very similar there's the cardoon and here's the artichoke side by side let's see if i'll get one over here remember that that one side by side there is very little difference so put that there so these are all set up one per and I'm just gonna do the whole beep kind of press them in a little bit on each of them and then I'll cover with a little more dirt And then these will not go on heat or anything of the sort. Um, I'm just gonna let them be at room temp. Ah. Dog hair. <laughs> um, or maybe that was one of my, before I shaved my head. Cause that was pretty long. <laughs> anyway. Um, but I only recently just cut off all my hair, so I got tired of dealing with shampoo and conditioners and all that stuff. Um, so now I have my head shaved to about a, went from about three and a half foot long to, um, cause it was all the way down to my lower back and I'm six, oh, I'm at six foot, so. Anyway, um, that wasn't meant to be a topic about my hair, but yeah, I just shaved it all off because I got tired of taking care of it. And honestly, why was I taking care of it? My own vanity. And that's fine. I just didn't feel like doing it anymore. Um, everybody's allowed to do what they feel like doing. Um, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else, obviously. So, 
I'm just gonna get these in, just like I did over here. Label them. And these are gonna go into, um, those are gonna go into the, uh, here. Um, I'll probably let them just sprout. I might even put these like somewhere up where there's a little bit of heat just to get them going because these ones um, I do want to put into pots and eat from them soon. These ones I'm just starting them and I'm just going to let them go slow because these are, I mean if you look at this, the planting instructions on these is two to three months before average last frost rate. Um, I'm technically about five months out um, right now, but I'm going to move these out to the greenhouse and I'm going to up pot them and I want them to harden off. So we'll see how it goes. And then these will go out in the greenhouse for just that uh, cold stratif stratification and then they'll be able to sprout and pop whenever they want. Normally I would just probably put the seeds in the ground, but I'm letting the chickens right out and forage right now and they're killing all the bugs that are dormant and um, turning all my compost and all my leaf litter. But if I put seeds out there right now, they're just going to eat them. So I'll just keep them safe in the greenhouse until they sprout and then I'll transfer them. So this is how I start all of my seeds. Um, I probably won't do a lot of seed starting videos because this is basically it. This is how I keep them. I've got, you know, cold hardy. The bags are not closed. Um, you don't want to, in, you know, get moisture um, buildup in these kinds of bags. But I also uh, live in a very dry area, so I just don't close the bags. And then this all gets closed up. And, you know, right now it's a little full. <laughs> and the bags don't help. But yes, yeah, so this is how it just, that's how I keep my seeds. I've seen some crazy setups where it's all, you know, the plastic totes and they're very organized and, you know, I like them, but I also don't like a ton of plastic. The most I do is the, the plastic bags just to save them in case something happens and something gets spilled. Um, but mostly I don't have to worry about it. So, but I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and even if you've got months until you can be planting outside, doesn't mean you can't start doing something. Look into winter sowing. You can Google it. That's what this is. Um, it's setting a plant out that needs cold stratification and just setting it and ready, waiting for it to sprout outside in a protected container. Or, you know, start something like this with just a heat mat and... Yeah, some of it might not be too pretty, but it works, especially this, <laughs> but it works. So it keeps the cat from eating my yoga and nobody comes to this back spare bedroom. This is, this is my office. So this is my room. So just enjoy yourself, have fun, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will talk at you all later. Bye.